Hello, everyone, and welcome to Face Turn with Candace Cordelia. I am your host, Candace Cordelia, and today for Mission Pro Week, we are kicking things off with a very special guest. Her name is Kayla Sparks, also known as the Spice Ranger. Besides seeing her do her thing in the ring at Mission Pro, you may have also checked her out on All Elite Wrestling, CCW, and many of the other amazing promotions that she has been grateful to work for. But today we're going to get in with her work at Mission Pro and also talk to her about her side hustle as a television producer. So first and foremost, (laughs) Kayla, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Candice. I'm excited. (laughs) I'm excited as well. Thank you for being here. And, you know, this is a very special time. We are leading up to the December 11th Mission Pro Wrestling Show. It is the Mm -hmm. last Mission Pro show for the year, but not forever. The promotion has been going strong since its inception in 2019. And you are one of the lucky wrestlers to be a part of this amazing promotion. But before we get into Mission Pro, I do want to ask you, what is your earliest memory as a wrestling fan? Oh my gosh. Uh, since I was three years old, actually, um, there's a, you know, those home videos back when we had VHS tapes and, uh, for my third birthday, I got a Hulk Hogan and, um, ultimate warrior. Like remember those TV trays? Um, <laughs> and, I, and I just remember like, it's, it's super cute. Like I was like pointing at the the pictures of them, like that's Hogan and that's warrior. So like, that was my earliest memory is just like sitting on my, um, my dad's recliner watching wrestling on Saturday morning. That was my earliest memory, but I've, I've always been a huge fan of wrestling since I can remember. So. Oh, that's great. So was your dad also a fan of wrestling or any other family members? Yeah, my, we actually watched it together. Like as a family, we all watched wrestling and, uh, but when it came like later on in my story, like when it came to me actually being a pro wrestler, like my parents were really against it. So mm-hmm. yeah. 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 So let's get right into that, you know, because I understand sure. that your journey is adapted. It has been adapted to television and we'll definitely talk about that as well, which is super exciting, a major big deal, but, you know, talking or getting into your journey as a pro wrestler what did your family first think when you told them, you know, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? Uh, they were really against it because, you know, they don't want to see, you know, their daughter, you know, getting hurt in the ring. And that was like a big thing. But they knew how important it was for me. And actually, I started wrestling when I was 13 years old, which is just crazy to think about because that's super young. <laughs> but uh, there was a pro wrestling school um, that was local in uh, Schenectady, New York, and it was called 24-7 Wrestling, and they actually had, like, a, like, a kid, you know, teenager program going on, Uh, and it was, uh, it was super, it was super safe, like, everything there, they had it all set up for, um, like, parents to go if they wanted to watch, I, like, there was other kids, like, teenagers there, um, so it was nice, it was, uh, it was, like, a, like, our own little, like, family, so they treated everyone, like, like, uh, like your family, which is, which is great. That's how it should be. But yeah, they were really against it um, at first. And just uh, like, you know, my mom was more supportive than my dad. Like my dad was super against it. Like he didn't go to any of my shows or anything. So, but you know, I, I, uh, I worked, you know, part-time at the mall just so I could like afford like gas and tolls and everything for like to go to all these wrestling shows. Cause I got to actually travel and have the opportunity to go wrestle at uh, shows around the Northeast. So, you know, and I didn't have a car at the time because I was underage. So like my mom would drive and we would have like road trips and stuff. So that was fun. (laughs) Wow. Did you find yourself in situations where you were the only girl? I mean, at this camp, how Mm -hmm. many girls were you the only girl at this camp or were there other? Mm -hmm. I was the only girl. I was the only female there, Um, which, you know what? It was scary at first, but then I kind of like, you know, I got my inner China vibes because I'm a huge fan of like China. So I was like, what would she do? You know, cause she used to like, she was like such an inspiration for me growing up. Like, cause she wrestled the guys and the girls and she was just like so amazing. And I, you know, I actually got to meet her, um, which was uh, one of my favorite moments cause she was just so sweet. And um, I'm really sad that, you know, like she passed away. So like, that's one of the things like that, um, sorry to like fast forward, but like, since I came, since I came back, um, I actually reached out. It's really sad. Like I reached out to her like a couple of days before she passed away, just to tell her like how much she was an inspiration for me. And like, 
So that was really upsetting, like to know that, you know, you never know, like something could happen tomorrow and like to tell your heroes or like people you grew up by, like um, that were your inspirations, like to tell them, you know, today and like, you know, but yeah. <laughs> Wow. And not many people can say that they've met China. So I'm just, I, I know. described that had to have been such a heady experience. What was she yeah. like in person? She was, oh my God, she was so sweet. Like she, I just remember her um, being super like kind and nice. And like, I was so nervous. I had like, but you know, I was like 12 at the time. So like, I was just like, I, I gave her this doll thing. It was like really corny, like really cheesy. I'm like, I don't know what to give. So like, it was, she actually made it funny. It looked like it was like a voodoo doll or something, but I tried to make it look like it was her. And I put like, I don't know, electrical, it was like a last minute thing. I put like electrical tape for like her gear or something. And she made a joke and was like, oh, you know what? I should try that in the ring, like as her gear, like to be funny. Like it was just funny. She was just super nice. Like, so that's what always like stuck with me is that, it's she was just so nice to her fans and like uh, that's how it should be you know like because we're all fans at the end of the day so like mm -hmm. it's nice to see that you know people are kind of nice <laughs> wow that is amazing and it sounds like you had a pretty good introduction into the business particularly at that young age what did your friends think about you getting into wrestling you know going to school and being like I'm training to be a pro wrestler yeah, they thought it was cool, actually. Like, everyone, like, in my school was, like, you know, that's awesome. But then, you know, um, a, lot of the, a lot of the kids were, like, I got bullied a lot, actually, in school for, you know, being different. And just, like, there wasn't a lot of wrestling fans in my school. So, like, back then it was, like, nowadays it's different. But back then it was just, like, it was people made fun of me because the way I dressed. Like, because I was, like, a tomboy and I had, like, rest I would always wear, like, wrestling shirts and baggy clothes and stuff. And... Like, I just remember the kids were really mean and stuff. And I remember some of the teachers were actually really mean because we actually had, like, an essay we had to do. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And, I, I, you know, I wrote this essay in eighth grade. Like, I want to be a professional wrestler. And, like, this was before I started training. And um, I just remember the teachers were really mean about it. Like, oh, you know, that's fake. Or, like, why do you want to do that? Or you want to, like, do something else, you know? And, uh I was like, no, this is what I've always wanted to do since I was a kid. And, you know, like, I just remember my one friend, Christina, she just stood up in class and she like, she's like, you know, it's, it's not right that you, you know, you make fun of her about her dreams. Like, you know, it's just like anything. It's like being an actor, like, you know, it's, it's, um, you're out there performing, but you actually can get hurt and stuff like that. So yeah, that's, uh, yeah, my friends are really supportive, though, of it. So that was nice. They used to, they used to come to my local shows when I had them. And so that was fun. <laughs> what do you think your teachers would say now that you've had the success that you're currently experiencing in wrestling? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I guess I, a lot of them, like, you know, they were like, Dad, you know, it's stupid. It's fake, whatever. So I'm sure they're like, they probably saw me, like, still see me on TV be like, oh, yeah, I guess she, we were wrong, you know? <laughs> tell her she couldn't do it you know but there's there was actually some teachers that were really nice I remember that you know really supported me so that was nice um it's always good to have that support system when you're at a, that age you know and you're still growing and you have like good mentors and stuff like that to, to like push you and stuff so absolutely absolutely what was the show where everything clicked for you and you thought okay this is actually happening I'm living out my dream as a pro wrestler Oh my gosh, my first match actually that was back in uh September, you know, 21st, 2002 was my first match and I remember uh it was a lumberjack match and it was really special to me cuz like um all the guys that were there at the show, they all surrounded the ring so I felt like it was like everybody was there like cheering me on and uh that was one of my like favorite moments like just having my first match. That's like any, you know, for any wrestler like they'll always they'll never forget their first match. <laughs> That's lovely. And now here you are, fast forward to your work on television with All Elite Wrestling and Park <laughs> Elevation and then other promotions like CCW, which I mentioned earlier. But particularly with Mission Pro Wrestling, we have to give the promotion and Thunder Rosa and everyone involved their flowers because what yeah. we are witnessing in real time is truly a revolution, I believe, in women's mm -hmm. wrestling and in the wrestling industry itself. So my yeah. first Mission Pro related question for you Kayla is what was your first impression when you got to Texas you had your first show at Mission Pro and you met Thunder Rosa 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was, it was amazing. Like I, I have nothing but awesome, great things to say about Thunder Rosa and, and Brian and Melanie and the whole crew at Mission Pro. Like they're amazing. They're like, they're just, you know, they're just such good people and they, they really care about like all the women that like work hard and like want to chase their dreams. And they're giving them this, you know, this platform that a lot of places, uh, you know, aren't giving, but they're definitely, they're, they're just amazing. I like, I have nothing but awesome things to say about them. And like, when I went to Texas, I was just like in awe. I was just like, I can't believe I was so happy to be there. And, um, like the locker room, every, like all the girls there were like really supportive of each other. And they, you know, it's, um, it's different there. It's like a different vibe and like everyone supports each other and that's how it should be. Like, um, but yeah, like Thunder Rosa, I, I actually didn't get to meet her there. Um, she, I think she had an AEW appearance that day, but, um, I got to meet her in the ring at AEW at the Grand Slam in front of 20,000 people and I got to wrestle her. So that's how we actually met. But like, it's just crazy. Like this whole story is just amazing. Like, I can't believe all these opportunities. I'm so thankful for, um, Brian and and Thunder Rosa because they both really like they really made my dreams come true and I'm so thankful like I can't I just can't believe all this stuff is happening (laughs) yes and I mean Grand Slam I remember watching it and (laughs) I mean when Thunder gets out on the platform the pop for Thunder at an all elite wrestling show is it's just insane it's phenomenal yeah what was that exact moment like seeing her come out being in the ring with her wrestling her in front of, as you said, 20,000 fans for yeah. such an emotion on TV. What what was that like? I It was surreal. I'm so like, I'm still pinching myself because it's just like, you can't even put it, like you can't even describe it in words. Like I just remember looking at the crowd, uh, just in awe, like I can't believe my dream's coming true. And I get to wrestle Thunder Rosa, like the greatest wrestler that's like alive right now. And just like, I just remember the, the roar from the crowd and just like getting chills now just thinking about it like it's just an amazing I'll never forget that experience like you can't you can't beat that like that's just uh it was amazing and then to hear the crowd when she came out I was actually I was trying to stop myself from clapping because I was like such a fan you know of of her and like she's just an inspiration for for women and wrestling and just everybody like she really busts her butt like to where to get where she's at and she cares so much about just everybody in general like there's um she's just one of a kind and I'm just so thankful like you know that she she came in my life like when it when it happened and um yeah it was we uh (laughs) the match was I mean uh she she got one over me but I'll just never forget like that the whole experience and just being in the ring and being like it was my first AEW appearance so meeting everybody backstage and just like people that I idolized growing up like staying and uh <laughs> it was just crazy Matt Hardy and I got to meet everybody it was just I'll never forget it <laughs> wow what's the yeah. single most valuable advice that you've received from Thunder so far not just as a wrestler but as a human being in in this just, world oh my God she's she has like such awesome advice like I like I tell her all the time like I'm so appreciative like of everything that she says like the one thing that always stuck with me is she's like you need to like believe in yourself because this is your dream and you know a lot of the times like I've had so many setbacks you know because it's been 14 years since I came back in the ring so you know that sits in my mind and like you know I had a previous injury like a concussion which forced me to stop at a young age but I never wanted to stop. So like, you know, I have like, everyone's like human and we all have doubts in our head. Like, can I really do this? And like, you know, but like, she really pushed me. Like she's one of my biggest inspirations, like to just keep pushing and keep working hard and just like, don't give up and just always believe in yourself. So that always stuck with me with her. Yeah. (laughs) And one thing that I have noticed besides the many the many times that Thunder Rosa has spoken to the press about Mission Pro Wrestling, one thing that always stuck out to me is the importance, at least in her mind, of knowing the business in terms mm-hmm. of financial stability mm-hmm. and making sure that anyone that she's coaching and mentoring understands the importance of being stable financially and really counting your money wisely. What are your mm-hmm. thoughts on that, especially having been in this business for as long as you have? I mean, yeah, it's always important to like always like have a backup plan, you know, because you never know. And it's always important. You're right. That's actually a good point. Uh, luckily, I'm, I'm very, 
you know, lucky, blessed that I've had a career outside of pro wrestling, you know, in the past like 14 years, I have a really good, you know, job with the state and a career. Um, I was able to fortunately like purchase my first home when I was really young, like 23, which is a big accomplishment for, you know, being that age. So I'm, I'm just, I'm glad I, uh, I'm lucky that I have a good career, like a backup plan. So I would always say like, you know, to anybody in the business, like, it's always good to have a backup plan and just, um, yeah, just in case. (laughs) Absolutely. And there are other, of course, other promotions cater towards women wrestling across Mm -hmm. the globe. In your opinion, what makes Mission Pro Wrestling so unique? And in the short span of time that it's been around, just super popular among fans. I just think like, it's just such a different vibe. Like, I mean, there's, there's everybody is just so willing to help out and like everyone is just wants everyone's uh, best interest like at heart and like just the whole vibe of it is just so caring and like I love it like they treat everyone like your family like it's just even like outside like there's like personal things like they always like like follow up with everybody like um, I know Jasmine like Jasmine that wrestles there she, her mom you know was having breast cancer and they raised money for that so that was really nice they they really care about like everybody like as individuals like not just as wrestlers so like I think that's what really like sets them apart and I'm really proud to be a part of it like I'm so happy that I get to, to be a part of Mission Pro and I love everyone there they're great they're like awesome people so <laughs> that's amazing so what can you tell us about December 11th this is going to be the final show for Mission Pro of the Year. We can expect to see, um, of course, surprises. I, I'm just curious to know what is happening, what's going to go on, and without spoiling us, of course, if there's anything you can tell hey, us, look out for it. I mean, I know it just as much as you do. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I don't know who I'm facing yet, but I'm sure whoever I'm facing, uh, you know, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a great match. Like, I just, uh, I'm super excited. I'm super pumped uh, about the show, and I'm um, it's nice that they're doing another benefit show for Salvation Army for San Antonio. So that's nice. It's really special that they do that to get back to the community, which is super important. So I'm glad that I get to be a part of that and hopefully raise money for uh, for them. So, yeah, I'm super pumped. <laughs> it's already coming up next month. So uh, exactly. <laughs> Time flies. Right. And, and it you've done, it, seriously, and you and Mission Pro have done so much within a really tough time with the pandemic Mm -hmm. one and just in this year alone 2021 the amount of the just the fast speed of success that both the promotion and yourself have achieved it's it's just absolutely terrific so kudos to you kudos to mission for wrestling And everyone just can't wait to see what you and the promotion are going to do next in 2022. What are your hopes for 2022 yourself uh, within Mission Pro and also just within your career in general? Oh, my gosh, that's a good question. Um, Just uh, just keep working hard, keep working, you know, wrestling more shows and matches. And um, with Mission Pro, like I I'm excited to be there. Any opportunity I get. So, um, you know, I'm just excited as far as like my career and just I'm I'm excited like for any opportunity that comes knocking. I just want to like really work hard and train, um, you know, train more and, uh, you know, just it's an exciting time, you know, to be, to be um, wrestling right now. So I'm excited. (laughs) Yes. And we are excited as well. We're also excited to learn more about against the ropes. Now, when I, heard about this, I was blown away because wrestling in and of itself is hard as it is, but yeah. diving into the world of scripted television is just mm-hmm. as hard. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> please tell yeah. us about this TV series, which I understand is based on your wrestling journey and growing up yeah. as a wrestler in a really male dominated sport as well at such a young age. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was such an amazing experience. Like, um, so earlier this year, uh, you know, my friend Shane Alden, he's um, the owner of New Light Media Films. He approached me and he heard me do a uh, another wrestling podcast for Shining Wizards, which that just came out of nowhere. Like they just wanted to do an interview with me. And I wasn't even thinking about like coming back to wrestling or anything like that yet. They just wanted to talk about my career and stuff like that. And then Shane heard that and he's like, hey, I've been really wanting to do a TV series about wrestling, but I haven't found the right story. He's like, would you be interested? I'm like, heck yeah, that would be awesome. Like, 
but you know, I'm nobody, I'm nobody special. Like what, what, you know, but he's like, no, really let's, he's like, uh, but yeah, so I'm really grateful for that, that he gave me that opportunity. And I got to be, uh, the executive producer for the project, which I've never done anything like that before. So that was really, that was really fun, um, to get to work with everybody and the, be a part of the process of like the actors and actresses that, um, that were a part of the show and like working on the script and the TV show. Um, you know, some things were in there, like, you know, with anything with TV and movies, like some of the stuff is dramatic, like dramatized and like, but the basis of my story is in there. Like it's based off, um, my, my story, like growing up. So yeah, it was just a difficult time. Like for me, like I mentioned, like, you know, my parents were, you know, against me wrestling and that was really a struggle, uh, you know, and being the only, you know, the only girl was a little tough, um, even though like it was nice that it was like they treated like it was like a family and stuff. But like in the and then like you know the coming out story is in there too, like with um, how that was really tough, like with my parents not accepting, and mm -hmm. so that's all that's all in the TV show. So I hope it inspires you know people watching it, maybe at that are inspiring to be a pro wrestler at a young age like that. You know what? Just you know forget all the negativity and just you know it's just chase after your dreams and just forget, you know, all the negativity out there and just do what makes you happy, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. How difficult was it for you to find the perfect actress to play you in this role? Oh my gosh. So um, her name's Marissa Roll. She's uh she's great. She's uh she actually got to work on another project with uh, New Light Media Film. So that's how they they found her, but yeah, it's, um, all the, uh, all the actors and actresses there just did such a great job. Like, uh, um, uh, the one that plays, uh, Mercedes is, uh, hoops. Um, she was on VH1's, uh, Flavor Flav and like all the other the reality shows. Like she's awesome. Like she, she did a great job with Mercedes, which is actually based off of, uh, my really good friend, uh, Mercedes Martinez that I grew up like we got to wrestle around the same time back then. So she was a big mentor for me. So her character was awesome. Like everybody just did such a great job. Like I can't, I have no complaints. Like I can't wait for everyone to see it. <laughs> like all the characters, like my trainer, uh, Duke in there. And then um, he did a great job. And um, just everybody did such a great job with everybody. <laughs> That's really cool. I mean, was there a part in the series that really uh, made you, emotional that you weren't even expecting to get emotional yeah. watching it play back actually yeah there were quite a bit there was quite a few scenes it was mainly like the dinner table scene which I don't want to give it away but like you know the it, that was like the scene where that was really hard to watch like I even said that like when I was on set like I just had to like look away sometimes or just like take a breather take a break because that's actually stuff that really happened you know so it's like it can be sensitive, but that's what actually is like the real raw part of it. Cause it's something that happened and some like the truth, you know, the truth never lies. So like, it's, it's good to have it on the screen, like for everyone to see. And, um, yeah, but that was a hard scene to watch the dinner table scene with like the, my parents and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I got, I got a little bit emotional with it, but I hope that people watching it will just see that. Like, like I was saying, like, all the negativity that was in my life and stuff that I just, that you, that you can aspire and keep going and chase after your dreams, no matter what. So. <laughs> it's very inspirational. What did your parents think about your foray into putting your life story on the TV screens and really just sharing this very vulnerable part of your life to a much wider audience? Yeah. I mean, um, it's something that it's, it's hard to talk about, but I mean, it's something that they don't really agree with or that they don't support. But I mean, I, uh, I always like, I always say that it's important. Like you, you make life what it is. Like, so it's important to like always be happy and just, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I have like my support system and my friends and family around. So that uh, support me and are pushing me to keep, keep going and stuff. So that's, that's what it's all about. So I'm happy for that. <laughs> right on, right on. And now with having this feather in your cap on your resume, is this something executive producing that you feel you're going to get more into as time goes on? Do you see yourself doing more of it, not just with wrestling, but just in general in the entertainment industry? 
Yeah, I mean, that would be exciting. I mean, that if the opportunity is there, I would absolutely 100% like that's this was such a great experience just to be behind the scenes and like, like working with everybody. I, I absolutely would love to do it again if the opportunity comes up. So <laughs> that sounds fantastic, Kayla. What do your parents think about everything that you're doing now in terms of not just executive producing with television, wrestling, but being able to manage everything in your life because you're juggling a lot of different things at once? Yeah, that's it's it's hard. I mean, I um I just recently like um uh, didn't like I just, you know, cut off communication with them just because of like they don't accept, you know, me coming out and stuff like that because I didn't come out till I was like in my early 20s so now that I'm you know later in life they I just it was a decision I made just to to make you know to be happier and stuff but yeah it's hard to talk about but um yeah just life is too short so I'm just glad I have a good support system with my friends and family which you know makes me happy so I mean it sucks that your parents you know you want to have their validation and stuff like that and but I mean, it is what it is. I'm just thankful that I have like friends and family that support me. So, (laughs) well, yeah, let's get into how you're an inspiration in the LGBTQIA community. We see everything that many, you yourself and your peers are doing on social media. We see all of the matches that are happening, all of the success that everyone is experiencing in one fell swoop. And it's very inspiring Mm -hmm. for a lot of people, particularly in that community coming up seeing what you all are doing and saying to themselves, I could perhaps do this too. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's good. I just think it's great that, uh, that I hope that I can inspire, you know, like any um, person out there, whether they're gay, lesbian, bi, you know, transgender, whatever, that there's a place for you no matter what. And especially in wrestling, like you see it more now, uh, there's a lot more wrestlers like coming out and it's, it's nice to see like um, the support, you know, which is important. So that's why I, uh, you know, this is especially important to me because I was like in the closet for so long. So like, and I was ashamed of it, you know, like with um, my sexuality and stuff. So now it's important for me to like put it out there and like, you know, tell the world, like, it's okay to be who you are and be happy. And, you know, no matter what you are. So, um, Yeah, it's important for me. I hope that, you know, with this uh, TV series that people can watch and be inspired to, you know, not not give up and just um, chase after your dreams, no matter what it is, you know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. What other dreams? And I did ask this question uh, prior, but I want to get more specifically into what dreams or rather which dream match would you like to be a part of? in your career is there anyone that you haven't wrestled yet that you would just love to wrestle at some point oh my gosh there's so many (laughs) (laughs) um I just uh I know you put me on the spot I anybody I mean there's so many there's such great talent out there as far as women um I would be excited no matter what you know promotion or um anybody really uh there's just so much talent out there especially in AEW and WWE so you know, anybody there on the, on the roster would be exciting. <laughs> yes. And we cannot wait to see what happens next with you, Kayla, and your career. Where can we watch Against the Ropes? How can we get down and, and to the nitty gritty of, of seeing you or rather seeing, I don't know if you're going to be starting. <laughs> that happens sometimes. That does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, might, yeah, you might see a little cameo with me in there, but uh, yeah, it's going to be, um, it's going to be on Amazon Prime and it's going to be on Hulu um, and uh, Rev Revry TV. Um, but there's no date yet of when it's going to come out, but it's going to be soon. We're just hashing out like the last couple of things with it, but it'll be definitely coming soon um, before the end of the year. So <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait. I can't believe it's going to be on all the like streaming uh, platforms. That's exciting. It's exciting. <laughs> That is huge. Amazon Prime, Hulu. I mean, this is fantastic. And what I'm personally noticing is seeing more wrestling stories 
have been on a mainstream level. We're noticing that there's a lot more wrestling that that's just happening on streaming platforms, terrestrial TV, film, as you can see the poster in, in the back of me fighting with my yeah. family. More people are getting very fascinated with the world of wrestling uh, and heels on stars. I got to shout that out. I love that show. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that, that now we're seeing more people who aren't in the business really taking to the story of the behind the scenes of wrestling itself? I mean, I love it. I'm all for it. So like, it's exciting that, you know, there's more opportunities and more exposure for wrestling, especially behind the scenes. There's so much interest with it, uh, with uh, fans and everything. So um, even as wrestlers, like, it's nice to see, like, it's like on a, you know, big platform. So it's awesome. I think it's awesome. (laughs) I do too. And my last question for you, Kayla, is ahead of this December 11th show with Mission Pro Wrestling, For anyone that is not familiar with Mission Pro itself, in your words, why do you think someone should come out to a Mission Pro show? I think it's important, um, you know, independent wrestling to support, uh, you know, any independent wrestling is important and especially Mission Pro wrestling. Um, You know, the men and women, they, they, they bust their butts to be there and they work hard and, you know, they always put on an excellent show and, uh, you know, it's important to, to support, you know, wrestling in general, but yeah, it's a, it's a great, it's a great um, atmosphere there and everyone will love, um, everyone that goes to their shows will love it. So <laughs> I can't wait to check out a show myself. I'm really looking yeah. forward to that <laughs> oh, day and to also <laughs> seeing you in the ring. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on everything that you've accomplished alone in this year. It is just such a fantastic thing to witness and we wish you the best. And yes, if there's anything you want to plug besides against the ropes, your social media, now is the time to do so. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Candice. I know I'm so excited. Um, You're so sweet. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to have this opportunity and thanks to Brian and Thunder Rosa and everybody. Um, You can catch me. My uh, social media is Kayla Sparks 247 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And, um, I just wanted to say it's such an honor to like be a part of like Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Like I grew up, you know, reading the magazines and stuff and um, super, uh, super excited. I was so happy to see the Pro Wrestling, uh, the women's PWI list that came out. And uh, just want to give a shout out. Like I just got the the edition of Thunder Rosa. (laughs) I'm so proud of it. You know, number five on there. So that's great. Beautiful. Beautiful. (laughs) I'm so happy for her and I'm so happy to be a part of mission pro and everything so yeah (laughs) oh you're so welcome kayla thank you for being a part of my show here with pro wrestling illustrated and thank you all for watching another episode of face turn with candace cordelia please stay tuned for more interviews and check out kayla sparks doing her thing with mission pro wrestling and all the other wonderful promotions that she has been able to work for check her out on social media twitter instagram buy her merch and just support please as we do here at Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>